Hi guys, it's me. Do you know hackers steal billions of dollars every year? Do you know every almost 30 seconds it's a new hacker's attack? If we are developers, we should care about security of our apps at least a bit. Today, I would like to show you what is SQL injection. It's very popular, very often used by hackers, and I would like to show you why it can be dangerous, how to do this attack, why it's important, and what is the most important, how to secure your application. Today, as well, we will do a few simple attacks for the banking application, so you will be able to test it and see how it really works. Let's do it! SQL injection is one of the most popular OWASP vulnerabilities that is very easy to do and can do horrible damage. It's kind of like a situation when we can push some custom and unwanted commands to the SQL database. For example, when we have username input, we can put some custom commands, like we can use deleting whole tables, getting data from other database tables, or auto-unloading admin account. By SQL injection, attacker can quickly get access to data that should never be accessible to the regular user. For example, that can be your private messages, bank transactions, sensitive personal data like your ID or address where you live. What worse, if database is vulnerable, attackers can have open access to millions of records in a moment. This type of attack can give the possibility to fire an SQL comment not only getting data. For example, an attacker can send money from your account to his own, change your account balance or delete all the records. That could be very painful, especially when no backup. When we build an application, very often we have some permissions for XRO, like only admin can delete or edit records, a request to a friend needs to be accepted by an invited person, etc. What if an attacker could go into the database and send messages from your account and his account as a verified, verified friend or edit posts from your social profiles? So we actually build it like some of application that you can do an attack on. You can download it from the GitHub backend, frontend. You can check the code, maybe modify something. And uh, you do. You need to do a simple setting for the application. You can take a look what we do now and follow the steps. The first one, it will be to visit our GitHub and download the application. Here you have URL, you have simple instruction what to do, but anyway, I will tell you now. Here you need to set up, is the first file where you need to set up the connection string. You need to type user, database, password, and your host, of course. It's default as a local host. The second one file where you need to set up that is vulnerabilityDB go and here you need to do the same. The third step is to uncomment migrations, load them and run the application. That will do migrations and prepare your PostgreSQL database to have all the necessary data. Of course, PostgreSQL database you need to have set up. Fine, now we will go into Angular 9 frontend. You can download it. I didn't say that yet, but uh, in the next lessons you will learn how to create this Angular and Golang applications. Okay, if we have like uh, our Angular, application we need to start it by npm install ng serve and now you can uncomment your api do the same go around main go
here as we can see we will have two default users with and default credentials let's take a look what will be password what will be the username in this tutorial you will not need to use them so much but you can test them So here, as you can see, we have a bit simple, simple low-level security just about the password to have it hashed. It's not good way. There is code is commented much better way than you should handle your passwords inside the application and verifying them. In this way, we will be able to use username probably because the password is hashed and is not passed as a plain string to the SQL comment. Now we will test like simple credentials. You can see Martin works. Next let's test Michael. Yeah, as well we have everything. Fine, now we can do a simple attack. We will use uh, escape from the string and now we will pass the SQL comment like our username is Martin and one is one that means true one more method that we need to add here to avoid this checking password is adding comments it means everything after these two dashes it will be commented so sql will ignore that as you can see before we were checking password as well so here it will be ignored fine it works you can see user was returned even if we didn't know the password Fine, it's the time for the second method. A random password. This method will return for us every user because it's like username is Martin or Taru. That means database will take only this statement and will return for us every user. Every user will pass the condition. You can see we took only first to the C dashboard but let's take the response as you can see we have two users so all from the database the third method is really useful especially if you we would like to take for example admin account very often admin account has for example id number one not always but it's very often so let's take a look how to take the user by his id It works, we have user with ID2. Fine, so we have everything. It was only a few methods that you can use for SQL injection. There is a lot, a lot of them much more advanced as well. And my main point, it wasn't to show you like how just to an attack, but how it can be dangerous for application and what you should focus on to prevent to be attacked or secure your data from being stolen. Of course, a smart attacker shouldn't have so many problems to avoid front-end validation. Still, it's something that will be the first obstacle. You can add a special validation to your forms that can check if your email is equal to email, if your username has any special characters or a length is not too big. 
If you detect the suspicious combination, you can block the form, for example. <clears throat> you can set the red flag to the backend about a user with his IP or credentials or a return and the like cookie flag to him. You can block his IP for a while or permanent. Again, the attacker will know how to avoid your ban. Still, it's a new obstacle and some people can resign from spending more time on your app. The next one idea how you can secure is the backend that will verify all the strings and, and data are sent correctly and pass all the uh, regex validation. It can be very helpful because it's much more difficult to pass the backend validation than the frontend one. It's helpful especially if you add limits to the number of calls that user can make immediately and for example stop it for a while. Additional pass comparison like compare hash and password. This method can help you to stop sending data back to the attacker. Of course, an attacker could do the damage like deleting something or change the records if you will let him do the SQL injection. <coughs> anyway, you can, for example, find the X user in DB next out the credentials by using. For example, in Golang you can use bcrypt, compare hash and password. The app will not return the asked data to the client back and should throw non-authorized or whatever error. Using some frameworks like GORM for Golang or Sequelize for Node.js can help you with the security a lot. In most of them there is an additional layer of security that will check if params are correct and build the proper queries from the data that the user sends to the backend. This one is very crucial. By declaring tight types, you can avoid a lot of problems, not only with the security. If you will set up all the interfaces and types properly, there is almost impossible to send the wrong data back. All of the data will be sent in 100% format that you would like to return to the final client. Congratulations! Now you know what is SQL injection. Now you know how to use it, you know how to secure your application and you know why it's dangerous. What is the most important, you need to remember you shouldn't do it against the software, you are not the owner or you have not permission from the owner to do it. It can be illegal and can be kind of cyber crime, so never do it. But it's a lot of ways where you can do it, you can use our code, you can build your own application, or you can find like bug bounty programs or in the virtual labs where you can train it. Okay, it's everything. If you like the video, give us thumb up subscribe our channel and leave a comment. Maybe you would like to add something to our video or change. If yes, feel free. Uh, you need to also remember, it's only the first lesson about web security. You can follow our channel to get more of the content about that. And you can follow our channel to see how we build the banking backend and how we build the banking frontend. It will be in separate videos, you will have links below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!